Welcome back to Opening Statements. This morning, we're shining a spotlight on two high-profile cases, both happening in Florida and both with some stunning parallels. First, we have the Black Swan murder trial that's in jury selection, uh, actually getting ready for the opening statements to begin this morning. Uh, the jury selection wrapped up late in the day yesterday. Former ballerina Ashley Benefield accused of murdering her husband, Doug. So you, they were in an argument? Oh, I don't know. I, I, she came in. She was quite hysterical. I didn't know who was banging on my door. She said that she attacked her, and she shot him. They've been having trouble. And then there's the case of OnlyFans model Courtney Clenny, who's accused of murdering her boyfriend, Christian Albumselli. I said, done. Okay, fine. Done. 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 Because you're like, you're costing me money. I'm I didn't do Now, both of these women are young, attractive, and both appeared to be in toxic relationships. Both cases, we're going to see claims of self-defense, affirmative defenses of self-defense being put forward by their respective defense teams. The Benefield case starting today, the Clenny case uh, starting in the future. I have a very special guest I want to welcome on the program now. Attorney Frank Prieto is with us. He is one of Courtney Clenny's defense attorneys. You've seen him here on opening statements before, and we're so pleased to have him back. Frank, good morning to you. Good morning, Julie. Could we start, please, uh, with something I keep hearing a lot of questions about in our newsroom? And if I'm hearing it in our newsroom, I'm sure that uh, many of our wonderful trial watchers around the world are asking the same thing. In the Benefield case, when, when we, ha we have that stand your ground hearing that um, was widely publicized where Ashley Benefield was trying to get immunity from prosecution and the judge said, uh, no, you're not immune from prosecution. There's plenty of evidence for this case to move forward for the charging to stand. Uh, would you talk to us at trial about the defense's ability to raise the stand your ground defense in front of the jury? Right, Julie. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it appears the judge found uh, so, so under Florida's stand your ground immunity defense for the judge to take the case out of the hands of the jury in that pretrial motion, um, the, the defense has to put forth a prima facie case of self-defense or standard okay. ground immunity. Then that burden switches to the prosecution for to pr promote clear and convincing evidence. And the judge found that. But just because you lose that hearing doesn't mean you can't present the same defense, a self-defense claim in front of the jury. So the jury will have to see whether or not she was justified in using deadly force. Frank, thank you for that, because I think what could be unclear, and I could understand why, uh, to trial watchers or folks thinking that, oh, it all ends right there because of the judge's finding, but no, we, we should expect to see it again at the time of trial in front of the jury. And uh, yesterday, we saw something kind of bizarre. We saw the defense team asking the judge to recuse himself because of what he found in the stand your ground here. And Frank, I got to take my job was on the floor, but I'm thinking, why in the world are they doing this? Uh, your thoughts on that, please. Yeah, I, I, you know, th those are always risky moves to try to ask a judge to recuse himself. Uh, clearly, you know, I think the judge issued a very lengthy opinion. I did not read it all, but, you know, apparently they felt that uh, the judge showed some type of prejudice toward their client in denying the motion or the language that the judge was using in that motion. But but again, to, to turn uh, the, you know, to ask the judge to recuse himself, you know, it can be a little bit of a gamble. Uh, you don't necessarily want a judge that you said can't be fair, uh, you know, making decisions when, when there's a gray area of, of the law or a new motion you're going to raise. So it's somewhat of a risky tactic, but again, it creates an appellate issue. Uh, that you're also on the defense side. Look, you may not win the motion, but you raise uh, an issue for appeal, and that's something that you always have to be cognizant of.
Certainly. Uh, Frank, thank you for that. I, I want to play a clip, uh, and this is from a totally different judge. This is when Ashley Benefield's case was in a family court, and she was making allegations that her husband, Doug, was abusing her. Specifically, she was saying that he was attempting to poison her while she was pregnant with her daughter, uh, and the judge essentially found her to be lying. Let's take a listen to what that judge said. This court will find that as far as credibility is concerned, I would find, and I'm going to say this in the gentlest form I possibly can, that there is absolutely not a single scintilla of credibility that I'm attaching to anything that was testified to, at least in this hearing of Ms. Benefield. Ooh. Okay, and so we know that was that was one of the things she claimed. There hasn't been much. There's an issue where she claims that he was rough with the family dog and this issue of attempted poisoning. In, in this respect, this case is very different from your case with, with your client, Courtney Clenny, Frank, as you know. Um, if this judge didn't find there was any truthfulness here to, to prior abuse, uh, how do you think these jurors may see the situation? Well, you know, um, the judge said she used, a, 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 you know, a, a very strong word that she found there was not even a scintilla of evidence. And uh, your viewers know, as well as you do, Julie, that that means basically uh, she thought it was frivolous, uh, that there wasn't any evidence to support those claims, the poisoning. Look, I wasn't at the hearing, but I'm guessing they, there was no evidence presented. Lab results, there was no tests. Um, and it is, um, it's concerning for the defense team in, in a situation like that where um, the jurors are going to now have to judge, uh, you know, Ashley's uh, credibility because in order to mount your self-defense defense, defense uh, she, she most likely is going to have to testify or has to testify. And so her credibility is going to be scrutinized by all, all, all of those jurors. Excellent points, Frank. Uh, Frank, before we let you go, certainly want to ask you, with the latest in your case, do we have a trial date yet? Uh, Julie, we still do not. Um, I, I believe uh, you had my co-counsel, Ms. Puglisi, on the other day when uh, concerning the, uh, the issue that the judge threw out uh, the computer uh, access case because of the state's uh, invasion of the defense camp. So that has really delayed things. Um, we are now uh, hoping that the Miami-Dade State Attorney's Office will do the right thing and recuse themselves now that they've looked into our work product. Um, so if they don't, well, we're, we're filing the motions. That's going to have to be litigated. Uh, we do have a status coming up in, in mid-August, I believe. Uh, we're, we're hopeful that we might be able to set a trial date, but this has been delayed due to the misconduct of the, uh, the State Attorney's Office, unfortunately. That was a huge win uh, that you and Sabrina got, Frank, in getting the computer case uh, thrown out uh, for uh, for your clients. And so please keep us posted. We'll be following the status hearing uh, and certainly would love to have you and Sabrina back anytime. Frank Prieto, thanks so much for all of the analysis and the explanations. Really appreciate it.